Hey, it's your pal Mike Shea from Sly Flourish, here with Sly Flourish's Lazy DM Prep. This is a weekly show shot 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Times on Twitch in which I go through steps from Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master while preparing for my Sunday D&D game. In this case, I am running the hardcover campaign adventure Rime of the Frost Maiden. This show, like all of the work of Sly Flourish, is brought to you by the patrons of Sly Flourish. You can become a patron of Sly Flourish by going to patreon.com slash slyflourish and signing up. Patrons get access to all kinds of exclusive content content, but most of all, they help me put on shows like this. So for the patrons of Sly Flourish, thank you very much for your support. So where are we? Uh, the characters had finished with Moose Jaws, and they were making their way back through 10 towns from north to south and stopped off in Bryn Shander. Our strong start was that on their way between the city of or the town of Targos and Bryn Shander, they got jumped by three Githyanki hunters known as the Silver Claw. The hunters were hunting for those who might have been affected by mind flayers. And we had at least one character who was uh, Shadowhawk, the sorcerer, was affected by mind flayers. So the hunters kind of looked around. And they, and they had some kind of conversation, and then it went south, and then everything started to fly. And boy, Githyanki are fun. They hit hard. Githyanki are good. They, they, you know, there's all this conversation happening on Twitter and, and other places these days about monster damage, thanks to Teos, who's bringing this up, which is a very good problem about monsters typically don't do enough damage, especially the higher level you get. And today... They, you know, Githyanki don't suffer that problem. They, they, they do a lot of psychic damage with their attacks. So, yeah, they got a big fight. I used that bow, the crazy, the mind hunter, a bow that can, someone who is attuned to it can see those who have psychic telepathic stuff. And that's right, we have two characters because the other character had been supposedly kidnapped by mind flayers and then dropped back off again. And, ooh, there's, that, that could be a... That could be a hook that I could try and see already. When you when you think about your game, you think about the characters, you get ideas. So the idea, somebody remind me of this, is it's possible. So Perrin, uh, Perrin Fat Rabbit, is one of the characters, supposedly was kidnapped by Mind Flayers and then dropped back off again. What if Perrin had either family members or friends or or other villagers with him that never got dropped off and are now the mind halfling mind flayers that are aboard the Descendant. That could be really cool. Evil John says, Mike saved you a copy on YouTube. Yeah, there will be a copy. You can watch the rehearsal, or the rehearsal. You can watch the rerun on Twitch directly when it's over. Or you can later today, no, it'll probably be later in the week when the talk show part is out. But you can watch the rerun unedited on Twitch. But it'll be up on YouTube. So, yeah, so the Mind Flayer fight worked really well. Hard fight. They were scared. People were dropping. Those arrows were hitting, like, psychic arrows were hitting really hard. They beat him. That was a really cool fight. They, they recognized, like, oh, man, they learned secrets about the Githyanki and the fact that the Githyanki are looking for Mind Flayers and all that. And then after the fight, they headed into Bryn Shander. Now, the interesting thing is there's so many character hooks and character plots and threads that have gone on that they spent a lot of time in Bryn Shander, like having conversations with people. They met with, uh, they met with Duvessa Shane. Oh yeah, I screwed something up. We'll talk about that. I screw things up all the time and I like to share my screw ups so we can all learn from them. And so, yeah, they met with Duvessa Shane. They met with Sheriff Markham, Markham Northwell, something like that. And uh, yeah, so the character definitely, the funny thing is, so Thanos asks, did, uh, did the character like his new magic weapon? It took a while for the rest of the players to be like, oh yeah, Perrin should totally have that weapon. And he wasn't talking. And he's like, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't mind it. I'm like, it was made for you, right? Like no one else needs a longbow. You are going to be firing arrows like a crazy person. Of course you need it. So yeah, it was pretty funny that he didn't quite grab onto the item as fast as I thought, which is always could be a risk, right? You put a magic item made for a character and that character doesn't end up being the one that takes it. That could be a, you know, a mismatch. So they went into Bryn Shander. They have the Bryn Shander Community Center, which was the former house of the Triad that had been used by the cult of the the cult of Oral to summon terrible demon folk. And so <clears throat> I I kind of had this whole thing where they had to pay the two guys. I should pull up their characters because they they they're they're pretty funny. They've been paying these contractors to clean up Bernard and Rolf. They've been paying Bernard and Rolf to clean up 
the place. And Bernard and Rolf keep coming back and like, well, you see that uh, demon nicker there that got down into the foundation. So we're going to really have to do some digging in there to get it. And I, I think, I think there's some, might be some chemicals we can use, but you know, they're kind of expensive. So we're going to have to try some things. And like, how much you need is like 700 gold, like 700 gold. It's like, well, we could probably do like a, you know, we could do like a surface level thing for like 300. Gold. Like, oh my God. So they're shelling out money to these contractors to fix the Bryn Shander community center. They have hired some mercenaries there to guard the place too. Their uh, hired assassin is hanging out there too. And during the conversations, the thing that I screwed up is there is a character who is down in Goodmead. What is his name? He's a jerk. Shandar Froth, right? So Shandar Froth is an agent of the Zinterim. He's not a Zinterim himself, maybe, or maybe he is, but he's trying to take over. He definitely works for Maxilantar, Nareth. He works for Nareth in Targos. So Nareth is a Zinterim agent who is the speaker for Targos, and he's trying to take over the other 10 towns. They influence them by, by capturing the other 10 towns. And Shandar was his attempt to try to take over as the, he was going to use Shandar to take over Goodmead so that he'd have control over Goodmead. And the characters know about this. And so the sheriff of, the sheriff of Bryn Shandar told the characters, it would be really nice if he disappeared. And they're like, you mean like disappeared? He's like, yeah. And they're like, okay. And I kept thinking like the, the right thing to do is to hire their private assassin that they now are friends with to do it. The nice old lady and have her go do it. So I thought that they would go that way. But then the player is like, no, I'm keeping the money. Like, we'll do it. It's er risky. And I kind of had to force the issue of, like, they paid her in blood diamonds, elven blood diamonds that can only be given in sets of 10 to the assassin that's going to do it. And they tried to give her two. And she's like, he's coming 10, you know. And so I had to force the issue. And, and I think the player is kind of like, well, you're just making me do this thing. And then they're kind of right. And it's because, like, I didn't want it to become a new big character plot. I just wanted it to sort of happen off screen. I'm trying to take these, like, major plots that just keep going. And it's like, just get rid of that. We're just go, you know, we don't. My God, you'll spend all your time just negotiating with people and Bryn Shander and there won't be any adventures. Right. So. Yeah, so I kind of forced that issue, and it wasn't great. And I didn't handle it well, and I don't know how best I should have handled it. Probably not worried about it at all. But I didn't like the idea that the characters now have to go to Goodmead to then assassinate a potential uh, new head in order to make sure that Bryn Shander is safe. It would have been a lot easier if they paid off another assassin to do it, and that's why I kind of wanted them to do it. And, it, and it, you know, yeah. And one of them is, like, the player is playing a trickster god who has like, you know, is a big mercantile guy. So he's always trying to work deals. So of course he's not going to, of course he's going to take more money, you know, and then try to pay the assassin less. But it just meant it was like 20 minutes arguing. It wasn't really fun. So what else happened? Our, one of our heroes, the character names just flat out of my mind, Ilda. So Ilda, her mom was there and her mom brought her a lunchbox with some cakes and some sandwiches and, and, and kind of talked to Ilda and said, like, I know you feel your father, you know, your, your other father, your, 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 you know, elven father thinks that you are a child of, of Oral and or a child of Thrun. And he's not even sure what the difference is, but you're whoever you want to be, my dear. And I know that we've had a hard time. And it's like, thanks, mom. And then she went away and she's like, I'll go, I go back up to my room and cry. And I go, once again, the room is occupied by another dude. And the dude's like, I guess I'll go downstairs and have a drink. Right. So that was really fun. What else? So they, and then, so they had to fix up the, they fixed up and paid more money to the contractors to fix up the Bryn Shander community center. They worked out some deals about how the money is going to flow through. They started a martial arts school there so that people could learn how to fight and pay money for that. And that generated a little bit of revenue. So there's a little bit of like city building going on, right? Which is cool, right? You want city building, but like, I don't have the math in my head about how it should work. So I'm just like making up numbers. And then, yeah, so they kind of handled all those three major plot lines in Bryn Shander and then started to make their way down south, heading towards East Haven. I skipped over any, like, major problems going from Bryn Shander to East Haven. They go into East Haven, and they see a wizard being burned at the stake. And that is a pretty good thing. And I think that that is a good, you know, a good strong start, right? It's scary. It's kind of, like, scary, and it's grim. And it's like, they just burned a dude, right? Like, who's that, Right. And I th and it's and it's going to be pretty interesting. So uh, I think I've got a good place to start today's session and good directions where they can go and options for them. So it is 13 June. 
Once again, we are using Notion to do campaign management today. I love using Notion. If you want to learn more, uh, you can see the notes below. If you're here on Twitch, the links were just posted. And anybody in Twitch can type exclamation mark Notion, and it will bring up the bot that says, hey, Mike is using Notion, and here's a link that tells you how I use it. So Because it happens all the time. Sunday, Froth Maiden. So first thing we do is we review the characters. Our six characters. I don't know. I think somebody's out today. Who's out? Is it? I think Joe's out. I think Gorwan Alcazar is out. So no cleric today. I think that's right. We have Ilda. Uh, Ilda is a half Goliath uh, barbarian who is her mother is Elvin. Her adopt not adopted father. Her her actual father is a Goliath. Her mother's husband is a elf who believes that Ilda has been blessed by Thrun. I don't know how that's going to play out. She did hear, oh, her mother told her, don't ever go to the standing stones in Dugan's Hole. Whatever you do, don't go to those standing stones. That's kind of a dare, right? Like, why not, mom? And maybe we should go see. So, or maybe they never do. I don't know. Just, you know, sometimes you just throw things out there and see how it goes. Alkan Dawncaller is Ilda's half-brother and a Goliath of the Wormdune Crag. I haven't had a lot going on with him, character background-wise. I think that's been okay. The player hasn't minded too much. I think I might have Pinky the Psionic Rat show back up again at some point. I think that'll be fun. So I forgot about Pinky last time, by the way. I was going to have Pinky show up when the Githyanki were killed, but I forgot. I forget things. So that could be kind of interesting. Shadowhawk is a drow, uh, drow member of House Zalaren and being hunted by the Knight's Kiss Assassins uh, and has an illithid parasite in his head, slowly turning him into a mind flayer. He picked that up from a griffin, poisoned griffin egg that he picked up along the way. So interesting. And that griffin egg is currently giving him the ability to cast, currently gives him the ability to cast uh, detect thoughts once per day, which is pretty cool. But what's happening with him is a good, a good question. Gorwan Alcazar, I don't think he's going to be there today, so we'll skip Gorwan Alcazar. Perrin Fat Rabbit is a halfling who was kidnapped by Mind Flayers, uh, came back and, and has conspiracy theories that he believes. Everything is kind of a conspiracy theory and believes that there are aliens out there, and he's not wrong. Uh, he just got proven to him when he, when he picked up, when he found the Githyanki, and now he picked up a longbow. So he now has magic items, Boots of the Winterlands, plus the longbow called Mind Hunter. So that is Perrin. We have Candle in the Dark. Candle is a tabaxi rogue, a former member of the Xanathar's guild, now on his own escaping and is being hunted by the by assassins. I'm going to have to have that come into play here pretty soon, have the assassins start to show up. Not sure when that is going to happen. I got two groups of assassins going after two different characters. I don't know how. I mean, obviously, the easy way is they get jumped. But I think it might be fun if both sets of assassins show up at the same time. And then there's a lot of like pointing at each other like the spider-man points at each other that could be cool magic item wise oh and and just picked up does he have a magic item list here magic items uh he now has moon sliver as a plus one rapier and he's got plus one armor to cast messy step he is good on magic items for a long time there was a lot of magic items that have now shown up so we're good on i have the characters i think are fourth level still so relatively low given the amount of magic items they have they are fourth level characters yeah so we're going to be doing magic trinkets for a while before instead of permanent magic items i think what else so we have reviewed the characters let's see there was one secret i was right ready to do and i forgot i already forgot what it was going to be somebody remind me i, I just mentioned it oh man i can't believe it. i should have wrote it down as soon as i was looking it was something that happened in last session's game something about the assassin what was the what was the thing about the assassin? It was some piece of knowledge that the characters were going to have. Oh well, whatever. So it'll come to me. If, if, if it comes back, it's important. If it if I will if it was important, I will remember it. Something from Candle's background in the assassin. I can't remember. Oh, it's driving me a little crazy. So the burning of and let's we'll open up another tab here so I can have like my NPC because I forget the names of the NPCs all the time. Boop, boop. The guy with the big hat. One of the members of the Arcane Brotherhood, Dazan. The burning of Dazan. I think there's, was there a secret about Dazan that I was going to bring up? I mean, there's going to be lots of secrets of Dazan, but I can't remember. We'll see. So uh, meeting, they're going to meet a new NPC, which is going to be uh, Captain Indra. So they, they, they see the burning of Dazan. They meet Captain Indra, and they really hear about... Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's look at last week's secrets. We'll, we'll take a look at last week's secrets and see if that reminds me of what's going on. So they have sort of two quests, Missing Fisherfolk 
and the stolen Shardalon, the ghostly stolen Shardalon. And we'll let kind of those investigations go, right? So that's really our strong start and our scenes are basically the same. I'm going to not do the scenes today. We're going to skip that step because I already, you know, I've got like my starting start is already deriving to what this, the scenes are. And those scenes really are, are they going to go after the missing fisher folk or are they going to go investigate the, the, the thefts? So secrets and clues, Dazan, I don't have to link them every time. I got the OCD. I, I like the linking so much that it's OCD. Yeah, let's pause for a moment and we'll go and we'll look at last week's secrets. So old session notes. Do, 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 do. And that was Sunday Frostman. Do, 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 do. So we never even got to some of this stuff, right? So this secret has not been revealed. Githyanki shot down a Nautilite. Illithid Nautilite is the one of the Astral Sea. They didn't really learn that because they killed them, the Githyanki. They didn't really get any answers from them. They did know how much influence they have. Uh, Mind Flayer breed by transmorphing humanoids into Mind Flayers. I think that's known. Mind Flayers want to build an Elder Brain. They don't know that. There is a hidden Githyanki ship, including a number of hunters, a knight, and a young red dragon. They do not know that. They don't know about Macridius, who's trying to uh, get rid of the knight. That has not come out yet. Invisible Ghost of East Haven is only Steel Shardalon. That is not known yet. Some like Duergar are building a massive weapon. They don't know that. So lots of the secrets didn't come out because they spent so much time dorking around in Bryn Shander with their Bryn Shander stuff. So, yeah. And that happens, right? Like, things get complicated, and, and there's lots of plots, and people want to, you know, people want to do that. I'm going to grab this treasure item, and I'm going to stick that on. Well, I've, I'm thinking about it, just so I've got a record of it. Put that on parent sheet and give it a name. I could, of course, make an item because I think I've got an item record, right? Ah, but why bother? Sometimes, you know, it is interesting. I bet you, yeah, I have an item one, but look, I've, I don't think I have anything. I have like, I have one item in there, the Book of Thrun, right? I don't have like anything in here and I could make a thing for the bow and that might be cool, but I don't know. Sometimes it's just a hassle. Keep things simple. But I bet you I can drop villains and items and never really lose it and just have npcs which are basically which include villains don't bother with item cards and simplify things bet you i could do that so in fact why don't i we'll just delete this page and then do i have like the villains are all you know it's all a bunch of npcs like it's just it's the same thing so we're gonna get rid of the villains delete that one too there and now it's easier right a little simpler i even like do i use the fronts i have this list of fronts but that's not really helpful either I'm going to get rid of fronts. You don't want your notes to be overly complicated. You want your notes to really serve you. So I really like to, you know, I want to, I want to just keep my, keep my, you know, keep things easy. So back to the notes. Okay. And other secrets. So what about Dazan? Dazan was seeking a path to a huge structure under the ice. He had maps and journals now in the possession of Captain Imdra. Imdra will give over the, I, the the journals to the characters if they find, if they learn the fate of the missing fisher folk and solve the mystery of the stolen Shardalon. So they have two quests that they can do here. They do both of those quests. They get now access to the, the next quest. I think that's a fine way to go. Do I need them to do both quests? I need them to do the Duergar one. So probably not. I, I think it's probably they'll, they'll give the characters if they learn the mystery of this. Well, I don't know. We'll keep it that way. But I bet they could be convinced not to do the Fisher Folk one. I think they're going to want to do it because they already know about... Speaking of Maud, Maud Chiselbone lives in a cave north of East Haven along the shelf of ice bordering care Deneval. Maud regularly comes to town selling herbs and ointments. What does she sell them for? So if you are an ancient hag, what do you want? You, obviously people. Does she sell? She probably sells it for gossip. And from this, so Maud has regularly killed and eaten people she's learned about through the gossip. That's pretty cool. What do we know? The ghosts stealing the Shardalon stuff are actually Duergar from a clan known as the Sunblight. 
Dark Plain DM says, love that. The info on who to exploit or trap is more valuable than money. Yeah, so they did think, oh, she's just an old lady and she just likes to gossip about people. No, well, she does. She hears a lot of gossip about a lot of things. And then she hears that like, oh, well, you know, Jilly's husband is a real bastard and he regularly beats her up and gets drunk and goes off into the woods. And she's like, oh, really? Huh, how about that? Poor Jilly. And then like, yeah, he never came back one night. He must have died. And it's like, yeah, I ate him. Right. You know, I killed him. I ripped him in half and I ate him and he tasted good. So, yeah. So it's still like, oh, yeah, there's been like bandits on the, you know, some some thugs from from East Haven or some thugs from Goodmead have been causing trouble along the road. But, oh, they went away. Right. And it's like, yeah, they went away. I think that could be pretty cool. It goes to Chardolan. Let's see. The town hall in East Haven. Let's see. A massive Chardolan. Ma masthead from a sunken ship called the Howling Fiend lies in a vault in the cellars of the town hall of East Haven. There's a nice little bit of information. Maud sounds like your old lady ex-assassin. Kind of only, yeah, the Maud, yeah she's not a hag though. But I think, I think Maud, how about Maud is the sister of what not ruth what's her name hey look i deleted a page blanche i think blanche northcloud and maude are sisters the question is who's the third sister you know did, did they have a third sister it, isn't there a yeah is this another one where there's two sets of hags i think it is like so I, and granted i'm making another set of hags i always like hag covens but I think that there's a bunch of night hags in the final chapters of this adventure too and you're like oh, more hags and this happened in Annihilation, too, where it turns out there was two. Well, what if we turn a disadvantage into an advantage? And what if they had a third sister who was murdered? Now, Watsi loves hags so much they put it in. So I think, let's let's do a little bit of homework here. A little bit of homework, a little bit of research. Go to my sources, go to my adventures, go to Dragon of Rhyme of the Frostman. Where is it? Man. Oh, God, nothing's in alphabetical order. Oh, because it's Icewind Dale, right? Thank you, marketing people. So in, I'm pretty sure... Anti-pinch, anti-pillage, and anti-plunder. And they are night hags. So let's see. Maud, Blanche, and who were rivals and feuded with three night hags known as an anti-plunder. And what's their... They need a name. I think we need, we need two hag names. Cool, fun names. Pinch, pillage, and plunder are all about stealing, about theft. The Night Thieves. So the Night Thieves are three hags, and they've been at war with each other. The Weird Sisters, that's not bad. Maud, Blanche, and somebody else. What's their, what's their, the something crones, the weird crones? Dolores, perfect. I like Dolores. And Dolores might be dead. It's possible that the Night Thieves killed Dolores, and Maud and Blanche are the two hags that are left, and they've been... They've been at each other since. The Copper Crones. Thank you. Perfect. Right? The Copper Crones. Maud, Blanche, and Dol Dolores is another Golden Girl. Is that right? I don't watch Golden Girls, so I don't know. They murdered Dolores and then fled down under the ice years ago. Maud and Blanche have feuded between themselves. Maud, Blanche went mainstream and became and and works in Lonelywood. Maud still is up to her haggy ways. So that's pretty good. All right, so I got lots of stuff about about Maud and Blanche and whatnot. Now it's I need some stuff for the Durgar. The, the Sunblight Durgar have been raiding the southern towns looking for Shardalon. Two brothers. What are they? Who are the brothers. I guess it's not toil and trouble. Which one of them is it? The Unseen. Yeah, Nildar and Dirth. All right, two brothers were sent by their father, Zardarok. Oh, come on. There he is. And were sent out by their father, Zardarok Sunblight, to collect Shardalon and bring it back to Sunblight Fortress. Oh, man, I'm packed with secrets. This is going to be a lot of secrets. So one of the other things is that Zardarok, I don't know if I'm spelling that right, Ah, oh, I suck. Recently married a rival Durgar, 
named. This is from the chapter Sunblight, Grandolfa. Grandolfa Musgart. She should probably be an NPC. Let's make her an NPC. New page in, and we go to uh, Frostmaiden database. We create a new character sheet for her. Bang. Give her the NPC tag, because we're going to get rid of the villain tag, I think. And we'll get a nice picture of her, because there's a big picture of her. There she is. She looks nice. Open in a new tab. Copy image. Back to our Grandolfa. And we have an image. And she is new. Let's see. Can I get it? So Dark Plane DM, you've run it. Uh, do you have any tips for running her as a fun NPC? Uh, Dark DM says, my players loved Grandolfa. So what did they love and how can I make sure to capitalize off that? I love that she has little mugs hanging from you know, around her neck. Two of them. So that's cool. And since then, he has sent his sons away. He's kept his fun sons far away. He has kept, he kept he kept his sons far away. I think that's pretty good. I don't want to like I'm I'm over oh, oh, oh too many secrets, right? I got too many secrets going on. So I'm not gonna worry about that. So I think I need a couple of monuments. These are so when when I have fantastic locations, I, I don't need big locations because I've got those in the adventure, but I need some monuments. And one would be like one that they might find if they're heading out along the coast of Lac Dinnishire. So what would be another interesting frozen creature other than a mammoth? Mammoths are too easy. What other big creatures used to lurk in the ice of Icewind Dale? Good night, Merrick. Thank you for coming. Glad you got to hear my rant. What would be an interesting sort of lost beast that's there? A yeti, dumb giant, something old. Like what, what would be around here back in the times of the netherese? It could be a dinosaur, a sun giant. It could be a big mechanical thing. You know, we could make the netherese sort of rock. A rock would be cool. An, an obelix. That would be weird. What are the creatures that they... Didn't the Netherees fight with some kind of weird creature? What were the creatures the Netherees fought? Boy, I'm digging back in some old lore. I thought there was some kind of... They were, they were battling something. Instead of going to the Ferrum. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. So what are the Ferrum? What do they look like? Oh, look at that. Magic grubs and thorn bat. That. So what if they looked like that? Like a huge worm creature. So we'll have uh, Ferrum frozen in the ice is one monument that they'll uncover. That's pretty cool. And then what's something that they might run into making their way across the ice to go to the, the Dwargar outpost? The frenemy dynamic is fun. Grandolfa would normally oppose the characters, but she sees Zardarok's madness for what it is and has no patience. Kind of like a tell Cersei it was me character. Yeah. Right. Oh, good. That is an excellent character to steal from. Uh, I forgot her name. What was her name? The old woman in Game of Thrones before it sucked. You have giant... Well, I could, we'll, we'll always go to the monuments. We'll go to random things. Let's see. Rune glowing obelisk of the Illithids. That might be kind of cool. I like that one. That's a good monument. So I got a couple good monuments there. That's, that's settled. Boy, NPCs. I've already got a bunch linked, right? I'm going to simplify my life by... Just getting rid of the NPC section. Monsters. The funny thing is I can kind of get rid of this too because they're in the book. So we're going to simplify my life and dump the monsters. Because right? you only, you know, just use the steps you need. And I don't need those steps because I've got them in the book. And I can come up with them on the fly. I don't feel like I need to have those outlined. I, I hardly ever go to the monster list in when I'm running the game. And really you want your knowns, your knowns, you want your notes to help you run the game. So relics, let's, well, how about that? Carved jewelry box of the Netherese that casts meteor swarm. Hmm. I'm inadvertently working on a notion template 2.0. Well, I'm not going to cut those permanently. I'm only cutting those steps for this day because of what I've got. The villain and item ones, I might, I might be willing to get rid of those. I just don't know if they're needed. And I think a simpler one might be better. So I'll have to I'll think about that. Shining Opal of Shantae that casts phantasmal force. That's interesting. What does Phantasmal Force do? That might be kind of... That, that sounds cool. First, you get lore because of Shantae. Second level. Craft an illusion. Intelligence saving throw. Phantasmal object creature visible phenomenon no longer than a 10-foot cube. That's pretty cool. We're going to grab that. Oops. And who is Shantae? The Great Mother, the Grain Goddess, Goddess of Architecture. If you are a 
Psionic. Uh, Deep Dura, Goddess. Oh, so that might be kind of cool. Let's make it a Shining Opal of Deep Dura. Because it can, and it's like a psionic gemstone. That'd be kind of cool. And do I need any other relics? I don't know. We're just going to do the one. We're going to make life easy today. We're going to cut a lot of stuff. And then marching order wise, I get, I get the marching order for today's group. And then I get the marching order for there. So we got that. And we are all set. A uh, single use item. The Shining Opal Deep Dura cast Phantasmal Force. We'll give it a DC keen to make it kind of powerful, but it only works once. So I've got tons of secrets. I've got a strong start. I've got good paths for them to take. I've, I, I know the directions that they can head. I've actually run both of these quests before for my Wednesday group. So I shouldn't have much trouble there. And I think we are all set. I've got my notes. So I want to thank everybody for hanging out with me today to help me prepare for my game. It is always a great pleasure to hang out with you guys and to get your feedback. And if you want to, if you're watching this video or listening to this podcast, you can help me out by doing a few things. You can subscribe to the Sly Flourish newsletter. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can subscribe. You can help support me on Patreon by going to patreon.com slash Sly Flourish. Or you can pick up my book, Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master. All of the notes for that are in the notes for this podcast or the notes for this video. So I want to thank you all very much for coming today. I want to thank you all very much for watching. Have a great day. And get out there and play some D&D.